Hello everyone, welcome to CNN 10. What's up, Don? What's up, man? I'm Coy Wire with your daily 10 minutes of worldwide news here on this Wednesday, August 27th. Hi, Sabrina. Oh, breaking news. Congrats, Tay Tay and Travis Kelsey. Today is your word Wednesday, meaning one of you helped us write today's show. And you all really brought it with those words you submitted on my social accounts. Let's get educated. Let's get those mental muscles working and get this show on the road. We start with a weather phenomenon that caused a surreal scene over the, one of the biggest cities in the U.S., Phoenix, Arizona. A towering wall of dust known as a haboob briefly encapsulated parts of the city on Monday, plunging the city into near zero visibility. And can't see anything. We're in the middle of the haboob. The winds were anything but Zephyrian. Gusts reach up to 70 miles per hour. Cameras across the city capture scenes that look like they were straight out of the movie Dune. The massive dust storm blotted out the sun. My mother-in-law lives in Phoenix. I woke up to a text from her saying, it was a doozy. The storm in Phoenix comes just days after a similar situation in nearby Nevada. A weekend dust storm blew through the annual Burning Man Arts Festival, leaving attendees scrambling to secure their tents. It really packed a punch. Now I'm going to turn this into a one-two punch. I'm going to bring in our meteorologist extraordinaire, Allison Chinchar. Good to see you, Allie. Good to see you too, Coy. Now You've been on the show before, but I think this is your first time at our Wall of Friends. What do you think? I have. I am very impressed. This is very creative. I like it. Best viewers in the world. Best meteorologists in the world. Tell us what causes this type of storm. Right. So a haboob is very interesting because even though it's a dust storm, it's actually caused by a thunderstorm. So you have the thunderstorm and what's called outflow. It's the very strong winds that come from the front of the thunderstorm and they push down to the surface and they're so strong, they'll pick up dirt, dust, anything from the ground, throwing it thousands of feet up into the air. And then once the dust settles, then you can have the rest of the thunderstorm, sometimes very intense rain showers right behind it. Say you're in a place like Phoenix, you see one of these things come in. What do you do? How dangerous can they be? Right. So if you happen to be in a car, the best thing to do is to pull over because oftentimes they make the visibility down to zero, meaning you couldn't see your hand if it was this far in front of you. So best to just pull over and wait for the storm to die down knowledge. All right, Arizona and Nevada aren't the only states dealing with wicked weather out west. Firefighters in Oregon are continuing to battle the flat fire burning across 34 acres of rugged wilderness. That's right. The 1,200 firefighters battling the blaze did finally get a much welcomed assist from Mother Nature in the form of cooler temperatures and even some rain. The blaze was initially turbocharged with a stint of dry and very hot weather over the weekend. And in California, the picket fire was nearly 20% contained at the time of this taping. That blaze charred about 10 square miles of Napa County in the state's central region. And while the county is expected to remain vulnerable this week, the fire has so far spared its world famous wineries. Now to a story at the intersection of extreme weather and cutting edge technology. The National Hurricane Center is partnering with Google this hurricane season in a bid to develop next gen forecasts. That's right. So Koi, the goal is to further leverage AI to help provide forecasters with better real time data as the storms develop. This in turn could help officials make quicker calls on things like evacuation orders, potentially saving lives. Now, Google says it's using deep mind AI and machine learning to make predictions about the storm's path, the size, the intensity at unprecedented speeds. You can even take a look for yourself at Google's Weather Lab website. So far, the model has shown, shown some promise, but humans still get the final say. A team of experts is comparing the results from this hurricane season in real time to see how they stack up. Thank you so much for stopping by. Before you go, as we're in front of our wall of friends here, is there a school you would like to shout out, Ms. Chinchar? Perhaps my alma mater, the Ohio State University. Oh, go Buckeyes, look out. Pop quiz hot shot. In the original book, The Wizard of Oz, Dorothy's shoes were silver. Why were they changed to ruby red for the movie? To better match Judy Garland's dress, to look more magical, to showcase Technicolor, or to make them easier to see on the film. If you said Technicolor, you should be glowing with pride. Wizard of Oz was the first film to popularize three-strip Technicolor. It used a special camera that split light into red, green, and blue components. These were later combined with dyes to produce bright, saturated colors. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. 
You can say that again, Dorothy. It's more like we're in Las Vegas. Hold on to your ruby red slippers, Wizard of Oz fans. Starting tomorrow, you can follow the yellow brick road like never before when the cinematic classic debuts at the city's iconic sphere. A team of more than 2,000 visual artists, AI researchers, and academics work with CNN's parent company, Warner Brothers Discovery, to enhance the 1939 film to fill the sphere's massive wall of screens. AI was used to fill in the gaps in the original original footage and enhanced clarity, and there is no place like home. Parts of the film's score were even re-recorded on the original sound stages. In a sense, that meant that we had to reimagine the cinematography, we had to reimagine the editing, and we had to do all of this without changing the experience. Because if you touch anything about that sacred piece of cinema, you're toast. Viewers will get a wicked cool experience, including fully immersive sound via 160,000 speakers, simulated tornado winds, fog, fire bursts, even vibrating seats. And while AI's use in Hollywood is a hotly debated topic, the creators insist their goal is to help enhance, not remake, the iconic film. I hope that we were invisible. I hope that our technology disappears. And I hope that people are just inside the story and happy the way that that movie has made happy happen for 85 years. We've all probably heard the phrase, you can't teach old dogs new tricks, but what if a robot dog could teach you new tricks? At this EV manufacturing plant, human engineers are getting an assist from a high-tech four-legged friend when it comes to quality control. Our Christy Lou Stout has more. This is Spot. A robotic quality control dog is in charge of inspecting this engineer's work here at the Hyundai Motor Group Innovation Center in Singapore. So what you're seeing here is uh, an example of innovation in action. So we're, we're using Boston Dynamics Spot robots to assist our uh, technician with inspection work. And what Spot is doing here is following our technician in his footsteps and control specific activities that are typically highly error prone. Spot will take a picture, send it to our command center where our algorithm will run and compare it with good and bad assembly and then return an answer whether the assembly has been done correctly or not. Before the job is done, the technician will know whether he needs to do any, any correction. Opened in 2023, the factory can produce up to 30,000 electric vehicles annually. Hyundai says almost 70% of their assembly and inspection processes are automated, with around 200 robots on the factory floor. The value of using robots-assisted inspection rather than human inspection is the consistency. So you really need to have that type of accuracy there if you don't want to have quality issues down the road. Today's story getting a 10 out of tail, 10 out of 10 is a special pod of merfolk in Northern Virginia. These mermaids and one merman in a club dubbed Metro Merfolk have taken their love for the sea to the swimming pool. For some, it's an alternative workout. Others, a way to escape reality. The pod is among the growing number of adults diving into cosplay with these shimmering tails. People want to bring a little bit of happiness, a little bit of joy, a little bit of whimsy into their life. The Metro merfolk remind us that life can be about more than just convention or routine. It can be about inclusivity, authenticity, and adding a touch of whimsy to your everyday life. All right, congrats to Mrs. Dumo and all our friends at Mannion Middle School in Henderson, Nevada for submitting Zephyrian, an adjective meaning of the character of, resembling or suggesting a light breeze. Thank you for boosting our vocab today. And I got a shout out, Mr. Fenton and Mrs. Hackash at Canyon Springs STEM Academy in Anthem, Arizona. Thank you. You put the cool in school swag. And from our YouTube subscribers, Coach Bulford at Pinewood Preparatory School in Somerville, South Carolina. Happy birthday, Coach. Show them some love, Panthers. Thank you all for spending part of your day with us. We'll see you right back here tomorrow and do it again. I'm Coy Wire, and we are CNN 10.